Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to disconnect our fuel injector, uh, fuel injector rail from the fuel line, which of course is right here. Then we have the little retaining clip that's actually what holds the pressure, uh, it holds the line onto the rail. It's got two little tabs, and those tabs go down and they fit just like this. That's how they fit. So you want to get this one first and you want to get the other one right under it and make sure it grabs it. Okay, but that's the proper position in which they fit. This will assure that they don't come off. So see how the little two uh, pointy things on the bottom just get in here, that way they stay flat. Okay, that's how that comes off. Next, we are going to remove this vacuum line and this vacuum line actually goes to a solenoid right here and the purpose of it is to vacate the fumes from the charcoal canister that comes from the fuel tank and it does that once in a while just to check the integrity of the tank and uh, we won't be reusing this we're actually gonna use this nipple right here as our vacuum source for our manifold for our turbo and all the things we need vacuum for. So I'm going to remove that off. It's one of the times I wish I could hold my iPhone with my mouth, but um, I've done that before. Not a good idea. All right, I have to put it down. Okay, so we undid the uh, fuel line and the vacuum line. The next steps is basically we want to just unplug the harness. So we'll begin here and we'll unplug all the coil packs. And unplug the injectors. And we're doing this because we need to move the harness out of the way. So, unplug the injectors there. We are going to also remove here the throttle body. Okay, I'll do that when I get my hand free. Remove the throttle body and just basically unplug the harness everywhere. It's connected right here, right here. You can just use a pair of pliers and just hold the pin here without damaging it and removing it. So we'll do that. And then after that, the thing we need to do is we need to remove the coolant tree, which is right there. I'm not sure where that is. Okay, that's the manifold. And when you come in, I'll go right there and you can see it right there it's held up by two torx screws we'll need a long extension in a torx and uh, that will just loosen this whole three which is three hoses that come out and we'll, we'll pull that out okay so i'll do that and we'll get back to it okay so we got the coolant draining and the next thing we're going to do is we need to unplug the knock sensor because of course the knock sensor it's got this wire right here that needs to be loosened up. So the knock sensor, you are going to find it right underneath the throttle body. And there it is, right here. Okay, so basically we need to get our pulse in there and unplug it. Now, all clips in this car are worked the same way. Basically, they have a little Press tab. You see, you find one right here. Okay, they have a little press tab right here, and basically, what you need to do is you need to press down and pull them apart. Sometimes that's easier said than done, but uh, most of them come out pretty easy. So we're gonna get the knock sensor on plug. Now, the the easiest way to remove your knock sensor, which is down there, is get a long extension. Okay, either uh, put a screwdriver in the end or a little tip that's going to hold on. You're going to put pressure on the clip, and then as you can put pressure on the clip, 
you are going to pull away the other part of the sensor which I already did and uh, it's right here Just show in a minute right there it is right there so this was plugged in okay so then again let's see if I can get in there okay yeah I'm just going to again apply pressure here I'll grab it and I'll apply pressure there against the clip and with my other hand I'm just gonna tug on and it comes right out that's the easiest way that I found how to do it so make sure when you install it, you install it in the same spot, so you can do it again later if you need to. Okay, so we want to remove all the bolts that are holding the manifold. And they're right on top, they're quite visible. You need an extension to get to some of them. This one right there. And all of them are on top. This one back here in the back of the manifold you need to get to that one and the last one is actually on the bottom and I'll show you where that is but I need to get down here and right under the wheel well so you're sitting under the wheel well your clutch line There's your clutch line, and your clutch line is held on by that bolt right there. Okay, we're gonna have to remove that bolt because our last manifold screw is right behind it, and you see that black plastic piece coming up, coming down. That is the bottom of the manifold, and perhaps you can see a little bit of that screw right on the back. That is the last screw that needs to come up. So of course, need to remove the. Uh, bolt from the clutch line to move this out of the way to get to that bolt and we'll do just that clutch line is a 12 millimeter and of course the manifold the last bolt on the bottom is a 10 millimeter which is right there and something that I would advise you is get one of these extensions that actually pivots. Uh, you'll find them at Harbor Freight. They're pretty cheap. And I, I buy a lot of tools at Harbor Freight. They're not the best quality, but you know, for the occasional job, they do, especially for the money that you pay. So that's a good investment. So we'll get that one. When removing the intake manifold, you see how it's almost out, and we basically got the harness over the throttle body right here. And sometimes what prevents it from coming off is these little taps on the wiring harness itself. And let's see if you can see them. I can show them to you. Okay, here they are. One is this little protrusion here where the wire harness clips at the bottom and then of course the bottom where the last bolt was behind the clutch line so the easier way to do it is go ahead and unclip your hose this is the bypass hose for the thermostat and just pull the hose out in order to make room all right and just tilt the manifold down that way up this way and it comes right out Alright, so there's the manifold on its way out. Here's the back of it. Now it's a good time to get here and remove the sensor. Anyway, I'll do that when I have both of my hands. 
And with the matting fold out, we're going to do a couple things to it. We are going to put a O-ring right here to prevent a leak. And I'll show you underneath how we're going to route the PCV valve out. We got in the intake manifold out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the actuator and place the O-ring in order to prevent the leak. And of course, you've seen the video. We loosen off our actuator. Now we're going to remove it just like that. Okay. And the purpose of that is, of course, uh, to put an O-ring right over here. So I'm going to pull that off. All right, the next thing we want to do is we want to prepare our intake manifold uh, for installation. Uh, hopefully you've gone ahead and taken care of and uh, place your O-ring right in here so you won't have a leak during boost. And now uh, what we need to do is we need to take care of this little orifice here. And that was where the PCB valve used to be. But we're not going to do that because we don't want that to come undone under boost. So you can get yourself one of these caps. It comes in an assorted pack. I got this one from AutoZone. It's about four bucks. And then uh, a clamp to put on top of it. Before you put on the intake manifold, what you want to make sure is that you went ahead and you routed the PCB valve out. And basically, the way I like to do it is I actually use a piece of the original hose and just clamp it to the PCB valve and then I insert on that hose uh, and just route it out towards the transmission. Now, it's important that when you route this out, you do it just like I'm showing you, right behind this coolant line because the manifold goes in here and there's not a lot of room and you don't want this hose to be pressed down or occluded. So just nick it underneath and out over the transmission and that's gonna go down there towards the floor where you can put a catch can if you like to. Okay. The other thing you wanna do before you put your manifold on besides making sure that of course your PVC valve is routed out is that you intercept the two coolant lines and they are right here and you add two sections of hose about three feet each and this is a 516 hose and of course make sure you clamp it down and this is what we're going to use to uh, feed our turbo with cooling now these hoses usually go right here this is your throttle body and one goes in here and the other one exits right here and unless you live in like really frigid weather where you're covered with snow and ice I recommend that you leave those out we certainly don't want to introduce more heat into the intake so you can go ahead and grab them while the manifold is out it just makes things easy and we're going to route these two lines out to the black back of the block and down to the turbo on the other side okay so it just makes it easier while makes it easier to do while the manifold is out.